Okay, so this video is on um, the first video that we're going to do as far with proofs. Um, I had made a video and my iPad wasn't recording sound, so that was really frustrating. I, I made four videos. So here's the first of those to replace it, but since then I did type up a, a sheet of her notes. Um, okay, so we have these different symbols and they're, they're similar to what we might have used with sets um, where and makes that they, um, that symbol and, and or is that union. Um, so these are slightly different in, in logic. Um, so the and, the or, the, the not does this little, little I don't know how you describe that, but that's the negation of something. Um, and then if then is the implication where we'll do that something implies and we'll use this, this little double arrow. And if and only if is our equivalence and we put, um, we use the two lines again and then we have arrows on both sides. Okay, so the first thing, um, and this I'm going to scan and post. So the first thing that we have here, it says, um, today is Wednesday. So they're asking us to negate that statement. Um, and so we will say that, that a not is going to be today is not Wednesday. And I'm making this on a Tuesday, so it's not Wednesday anyway. Okay, the next one is that given x is an element of the integers. Um, so in this world, if the x has to be an integer, our, our statement for a is x is an even integer. So we can say in this case, a not would have to be, well, if it's not, if it's an integer and it's not even, it therefore has to be odd. So we can say x is an odd integer. Because if you're an integer, you're either even or odd. There's, there's those two options. Um, however, this one changes things up a bit. So on this one, they're saying x is a real number. So now, just because um, if x is not an even integer, it could be 1 half, which is not an integer at all. It could be pi, which is, once again, not an integer. So in this one, our, our negation not a is going to be x is not an even integer. Because we've got many options for what it could be. Okay, the next thing there, it says um, A implies B, and so this can be stated if A, then B, A implies B, A so B, A hence B, these are what our textbook suggested, A thus B, A therefore B. Okay, the converse of A implies B is now B implies A. So you may have seen this in geometry, I would expect that you did. Um, so we're going to look at these and say, okay, the converse of each statement, and then state if it's true or false. So this one, the converse becomes if x squared equals 4, then x equals 2. We have switched. If this part were a and this part were b, now we've put b first and then a. This would be false because we could use if x squared is equal to 4, then x could, could equal negative 2. So that's why that one becomes false. Now this one says if x equals 3 or, notice that's that up here, or, if x equals 3 or negative 3, then x squared equals 9. The converse, if x squared equals 9, then x equals 3. Maybe I should have typed it in as x or, sorry, or x equals negative 3. Sorry, typo. Uh, and this would be true. If x squared is equal to 9, then it's either going to be positive or negative 3. The next one, if it rains, then football practice is canceled. The converse becomes if football, football, I'm too lazy to write it out, um, practice is canceled, then it rained, or rained. Um, and this one would, um, would be false. Football practice may have been canceled for any number of reasons. Um, there may have been a flood, and oh well, that would be rain. Okay, there may have been an earthquake. There may have been um, a celebration in town that we all want to cancel football practice and go celebrate the fact that the volleyball team won. I don't know. I'm making something up. We may have had a tragedy of some sort. We don't know. Um, there could be multiple reasons why we would cancel football practice. Some good, some bad, whatever. Um, Okay, or it could be that band has won the competition, and so the football team has to go cheer the band on, which they did this year, which was kind of cool. Um, so we don't know why, why practice was canceled. 
Um, next, okay, statements A and B are equivalent if both A implies B and B implies A. Okay, so what we have, if a statement and its converse are both true, then we can say A is true if and only if B is true, which we would write like this, A if and only if B. Okay, so which of these, well, the only one of these where the statement was true and its converse was true was part B. Um, so the true statement would be um, x equals 3 or x equals negative 3 if and only if x squared equals 9. And that's how we would write that statement. Okay, so then the next thing, that was the first, those three questions were from the very first section on the ch in our chapter on proofs. Um, and so that's this page right here. So I want HL and SL to do page um, 213, 1 through 6. Um, and now this one, this proof is going to lead us into page 215, which I have a, a different assignment for HL and SL. Um, so on this one, they're going to tell us that if x is less than negative 5, then x squared is greater than 25. So this is a proof by deduction, which means we start here, and then it, what, it's, it's kind of a proof by implication. This will imply something which will keep, we'll be able to keep going down. Um, so, so we have x is less than negative 5, which tells us that the absolute value of x has to be, okay, so if you think about this for a second, if I'm on the number line, Here's 0, here's negative 5, and they're saying that x is less than negative 5, okay? Our, our value is somewhere over here. But then we know that the absolute value of x, that's the distance that we are away from 0, has to be more than 5 units, okay? So this has to be greater than 5. Well, if that's true, then we know that the absolute value of x squared has to be greater than 5 squared. I just squared both sides here. Well, keeping in mind here that the square would take care of a negative anyway, that we can therefore say that this x squared has to be greater than 25, and now we have made it, we have sought, we have completed our proof. Okay, so these are going to be pretty similar to what you may have started in geometry, except we're not as concerned necessarily with what theorem allows us to say things. Each step needs to flow to the next, and um, and it needs to be. Um, you're, you're convincing your audience that this is a true statement. So the only way to learn this is to go practice. So head to the book pages and good luck to you.